So this is Morhib. He is a four-year-old colt. Uh, he's a lovely racehorse. He was our top money winner last year. He won, was placed a bunch of times, won at Longchamp. Really nice horse. And today we're going to do something a little bit different. <laughs> we're going to put him in a bitless bridle. Now, in racing, when people say the words bitless bridle, we usually roll our eyes and run the other way as fast as possible. Um, I, I rode a horse out in a hackamore once, and I had to change my underwear. It was just the most terrifying thing I've ever done. So I'm going to gather my courage today. It's a Sunday, and it's quiet, so if I fall off and make a scene, not too many people will watch except all you guys. Um, and we have William Micklum, who has come up with a different sort of bitless bridle. And we've been using Micklum bridles with bits, uh for for years on our horses love them so Morheeb is going to be our guinea pig here and we're gonna we're gonna try the bitless bridle and i'm actually going to get on his back with a bridle without a bit in his mouth can you see my hand shaking it's a little bit it's 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 not something we would usually do but he's convinced me that people who have race horses actually use these and so if somebody else can do it well i can do it too so we're gonna we're gonna give it a try so that's today's project now, let me just... The reason to use it with many young racehorses is because they get spit mouth. So it avoids any possibility of getting a spit mouth. Well, that's, that's certainly worth it. Now, he, we, all, we do actually hear, if you look at his, um, his mouth, William, his, his, uh, his commissaire here, the, we, we, we're in pretty good shape. So William has put on the basic bridle, and now what happens? So we have this separate addition to the bridle, big leather pad in the middle, and that goes round behind the back jaw of the horse near where the, what they call the curb chain groove. And then the end of it, either, size, either side comes up through here and you attach the reins there. So the reins are attached here and here, and the nice leather soft bit is around the back of the horse's jaw. So, so it's not going to uh, uh, cause any discomfort to the horse. And normally in a, in a Miklum, the, the bit attaches actually here and then it goes yeah. into the mouth that I'm way. now being attacked by a ball. <laughs> so we attach oh, that, okay, that is attached to the back strap. Right. So we do the back strap up in the normal way. Uh, this particular bridle is slightly the wrong size for this horse. So this is a little bit looser, but it doesn't really matter because when we take up the reins, you can see that there is a, a contact on the skin with this extra piece of leather, which is around the back of the, of the jaw. Now and I have, then, sorry, go ahead. And then we attach the reins. There. Except because it's a buckle, we'll put the buckle on the outside. Right. You had a question. My question, uh, and this is this was the one I was going to ask earlier. This piece of metal scares me a little bit because it's not particularly strong. There's a there's I, a. I understand, but I've never had one. Uh, never had say, one go. I've never had one go. All right, and, and that's the honest truth. All right, even on the racehorses. Even on the racehorses. All right, okay, I'm going to trust you here with my life, but, literally. But, <laughs> but, the, it's, but it's an interesting one. Is how strong. Do you, you have to be? Do you have to be? Good question. And yeah. there is this, 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 this um, perception with some riders that with racehorses, you just have to be super strong and use all of your muscles. But of course, it, you don't. No, you don't. That, that I agree and, with and, you. And it's, it's technique. And it's wrong. It's wrong. I agree So you with can that. see, and it's, I apologize for Sorry. interrupting because I get excited. Yeah, no, you no, see, me too. You, uh, the two you, of us together you, are a bad you, combination. You see the best yeah. uh, national hunt jockeys, the ones that j ride hurdles and steeplechases, People like Ruby Walsh, um, they would spend most of their time on a loose rein. They want the, they get their horses to settle, and they keep them very quiet. So it's it, it, within racing, you know mm. that you, it, it, it's a waste of energy to use to, to just come against. The, Obviously, yeah, you don't the want horse. the horse pulling, especially early in the race. Yeah. That said, we do in the we do the the bit for me. This is my my big question. For us, the horse uses the bit as a, as a, as a what we call in French a point de puy as a, as a leverage. It, it's it, and if you let it go, obviously he doesn't have that anymore. So how does it work with a bitless bridle? If you're if you're going to do a little bit more, would you do fast work in this? Well, as I would do fast work in it, but it all depends on getting your horse used to right. used to it. And uh, I think you need to do enough slow work 
And in the slow work, you get the horse to have the right balance and to be able to look after his own balance. Right. And if a horse is looking after his own balance, he's going to be wasting less energy yeah, and he's going to be true. more efficient. So yes. we're all looking for the winning self carriage. Self-carriage most, is a wonderful thing. Most race, so many races are won by a head or a short head. And uh, I came up with a video of one of your horses just losing by the tiniest short head, which is, which is it's, it's quite exciting, but so disappointing. But that short head could have been uh, reversed around for you to have a half a leg the head of the horse if or horses that are in that situation if they get a bit strong at the start of a race they waste that bit of energy if we can save that energy early on then it's going to make them give them that winning edge at the end of the race do you think any uh, any jurisdiction eventually will let us actually race with a bitless bridle because well, it's forbidden at the moment all over the world it's not it, it's one country that allows it Ireland really so Ireland uh, uh, um, Susan Oakes, who's an amateur rider, won a steeplechase uh, at Punchestown Racecourse mm -hmm. uh, in a bitless bridle. Oh, wow. uh, and of course, there are a number of trainers in Britain, including our, what, two of our leading trainers, Nikki Henderson and Venetia Williams, who use the Midland bridle with a bit right. to, to win steeplechases. Right. But you are actually allowed to go bitless um, uh, in Irish racing. And the same lady, Susan Oakes, won the big, prestigious side saddle race that they have in in Leicestershire each year. Uh, it's called Diana of the Chases. Um, and can you imagine going flat out over the Leicestershire countryside over these big birch fences, cut and laid fences, um, going side saddle, but plus she went bitless and she won it. Do they test the riders for drugs afterwards? <laughs> <laughs> you might need at least a bit of alcohol and perhaps some cocaine to get that one done, but I'm not accusing anybody of anything. I'm just speaking from a... Yeah. Anyway, well, okay, anyway. so we're gonna we're gonna see what happens here. I'm, I'm just gonna I'm gonna pull out his uh, his legs, which is what we always do. But... Come on. Lovely boy. to the gallop with it, <laughs> but it, I can see, especially if you have a horse with mouth problems, that it, it should be, uh, So many uh, horses in the sport horse world, as well as in the racing world, have split mouths. Right. And once you get a split on the corner of the mouth, uh, you get a bit of scar tissue and then it happens again and you get a split beside the scar tissue and it's an awful thing to repair. But if you have a tiny little bit of damage or you are just suspect that the horse is very, is very uh, tender in that area, very soft in that area, then this is, in a, as a training aid, this is a fantastic thing to use. We, we do have, I mean, we, we do try to avoid it, obviously, but we do have some with, with splits there. Yeah. Now, what we do is every day before we go out, we do put an ointment on the, on the, on the, 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 the that area 
so that we try to avoid that. I'm very interested in wanting to see it. I'm wanting to see uh, and, and where it's used a lot, Gina, is in the racehorse to riding horse retraining. Ah, yes, of course, that would make good sense. And then when the horse learns to be quiet in its mouth, so it's not worried about anything in its mouth and drops the tongue, when, you, when it's like that for a period of time, you can then right. put a bit back in right. and th they're not so worried. Right. Because as you know, horses are first time learners and uh, it takes a little while to make corrections if they learn a bad habit. It takes much longer to change a bad habit than to just do it right the first time, no. that's for sure. <laughs> so. this, is, this style of fitness drive is becoming more and more popular because so many of the business drivers are actually quite uncomfortable for the horse. Right. Well, you know, the hackamore is a deadly weapon. So the hackamores that have this inward pressure on the upper jaw molar teeth are a disaster. And they're very popular, particularly in the world of show jumping. And but so many don't realize that there is this tremendous inward pressure. Oh, there's tremendous pressure on the hackamore. <laughs> I don't feel, like I did say, I did ride once in a hackamore. And this feels nothing like it. So this is a very this is a very mild bitless bridle. Right. Well, and, and, and ter ter terrific for long distance riding, you know. He knows like that. that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, if you were an endurance rider, I could really yeah. do well. But the the attachment around the curb groove is already looking very comfortable for the horse. Yeah. It's just warmed up a little bit and blended into the shape of the jaw. Do some turns left and right to see whether you get some in learning or some meaning by that pressure. You can see how easily you're responding to the turning there. Yep. Yeah, and, no... and we are, we underestimate what precise communication we can have with the horse. Well, it, not not you, but so many other people think that we just have to do it with strength. No, and the reins are so sensitive. Obviously, we don't have to do it with strength. No. But it's all about that getting that extra half length to win the race getting the winning edge. And I know you are prepared to look at things in a different way, which is why you use the Micklem Bridle. So this is very exciting. And if we can have happier horses, we're gonna have horses that perform better. Boy. Very good. Good, good man. Yeah, that, that fits him well. Yep. Okay. And, and you see he can still open his mouth, he can still yawn. He can do that in the Micklem Bridle with a bit yes, as well. Yes, absolutely. It's designed it's for designed that. It's so, designed that way, yeah. yes. But uh, he has a little bit more freedom here, that's, that's so sure. So if you uh, clamp the two jaws shut, you know, basically what you're doing is you're asking the horse to submit to you. Mm. And you don't want that in a winning race horse or a winning performance horse or a winning show jumper. You want them to work with you. Right. Not to submit, so, yeah. but to accept you. You know, I used to get irritated at the bottom of the dressage sheets, they have a mark for submission. 
Uh, but it's the wrong word. Yeah, it should it's be the wrong acceptance. Word. Absolutely. And there's a, it, it's subtle, but there's a world of difference between the two. In the same way that when you're attacking your horses up, you don't tie them up. You want to, them to work with you, but not against you. Boy. Okay, that's good. This made my day. We're going to go right down the hill where you're standing there, William. Right. Perfect. Cross country nice. riding. <laughs> Come on, bud. Thank you to William Micklum for making this video with us. We appreciate it very much. We like his bridles very much. So don't forget to please subscribe and please ring the bell. It helps us a lot and we will see you next time.